Hey, what's going on, sports cars fans? Right from Philly here. It's Saturday morning, January the 16th. And um, I got a card in the mail in the past week, and it's a PSA graded card. But here's the thing about this card it's not in any of my set registries. So it's not in my 300 great baseball cards of the 20th century by Mike Payne. It's not in my post war rookie Hall of Fame. And surprisingly, it's not in the future Hall of Fame set registry, which in my opinion, it should be, which I probably will try to request to get this card into the future Hall of Fame set registry. But I'm going to show you the card, and I, I'm a firm believer in this player should, and not only should, will get into the Hall of Fame in the next Veterans Committee ballot, which will be at the end of this year in December 2021. I'll show you the card and I also will go over the Veterans Committee ballots over the past several years and show you this player and how he's done and why he's going to get in. Really excited to add this card. This card I've been eyeing for a couple of years now and to find it in this good of condition for the price that I got it for, thrilled. It's a 1963 Topps Tony Oliva rookie and a PSA 7. It's in the new card holder uh, label, Lighthouse label. There's the front, there's the back. This card is squeaky clean. Uh, and if you notice, his name's not Tony Oliva on the card. It says Pedro Oliva right over here. 63's got a lot of rookies in there. It's got the Pete Rose rookie in there. It's also got uh, Willie Stargell, which is something that I'm eyeing. Uh, this is a fantastic card. Tony Oliva, multiple batting champion. I think at least four-time batting champion. His career was cut short for knee injuries. He ended his career, I think, in 76 was his last season. So he played from 63 to 76. Great, great player. And... Now I'm going to flip the phone around and go on my laptop and show you his stats and show you also uh, the Veterans Committee ballot from him being on it and explain to you why I really, really believe he's going to get into the Hall of Fame. So hold on. Okay, and we're back. So I'm going to share the screen now and show you guys his stats here off of baseball reference. As you can see, he won uh, Rookie of the Year. And in 19, I guess it was uh, 64, eight-time All-Star. I said he was a four-time batting champion. I made a mistake. He was a three-time batting champion. Look how many times he led the league in hits. One, two, three, four, five times. Has 1,917 career hits, 220 career home runs. Like I said, one rookie of the year in 64. Finished uh, second in the MVP voting twice in 1965 and in 1970. Finished sixth in 1966. Won a gold glove that year. Led the league in doubles many times. One, two, three, four times. Like I said, as a three-time batting champion in 1964, 65, and then again in 71. As you can see, by 76, the knee injuries were just too much for him. He had to retire. He would have finished with way over 2,000 hits if he had a normal length career. Okay. Let's look at the pop report on this card. There's only 804 cards totally graded. 279 are graded a 7. 143 are graded an 8. 6 are graded a 9. And there's no 10s. So now back to the uh, ballot for the Hall of Fame. This is from the year 2015, the Veterans Committee. And as you can see, you need, there's 16 members that are on the committee and you have to get 75% of the vote, which is 12 out of the 16. Dick Allen and Tony Oliva both finished one vote short. That's why I'm also a big advocate that I absolutely believe Dick Allen will get in at the end of this year he'll get the 12 needed votes because history has shown in this committee that whenever a player has gotten to 11 votes, the next time they're on the veterans committee ballot, they've gotten 12. Ted Simmons was one. There was a couple other players. 
Here's a guy that I'm looking at also that I bought his rookie, the Jim Cott rookie, Maury Wills, Minnie Minoso, and so on. So that's from 2015. Okay, I'm going to move on to 2016 to show you a couple other players. Nobody got in in 2016 on the Veterans Committee. 2017, as you saw, see here, John Sheerholtz and Bud Selick got the uh, 12 needed votes. Lou Pinella is a guy that I'm very much interested in. He got seven. Look at Harold Baines. He had five and jumped all the way up to 12 a couple years later. This is 2017. I'm definitely eyeing Lou Pinella, and I'm going to show you why. Let's move on to 2018. On the Veterans Committee, it was Jack Morris and Alan Trammell. And here, like I said, Ted Simmons in 2018 came within one vote and got 11. Two thousand nineteen. Harold Baines, who had five two years earlier, jumped to 12. Look at Lou Pinella. He had seven two years earlier and has come within one vote. You will see me get a Lou Pinella rookie in the very near future. And then in 2020, remember I said Ted Simmons came within one vote short last time he was on? He got the 13. So that's why I'm looking at guys that got within one vote, which if you go back to 2015, and I showed you earlier, Dick Allen, Tony Oliva, definitely at the two guys at the top of my list. Also, I do believe Jim Cott and maybe eventually Maury Wills and Minnie Minoso. So once again, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and just open up to me here and show you the card again. 1963 tops, Tony Oliva rookie, PSA 7. Card is centered really well and the corners are sharp. There's hardly any white speck on the blue border. All right. So there you have it, guys. I uh, appreciate your, all your likes and comments. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. I just wanted to give you a quick look of the career of Tony Oliva, three-time batting champion. Came within one vote short the last time he was on the ballot. History has shown guys that come within one vote get in the next time they're on. Take a look at the 63 tops Tony Oliva. All right, guys, I appreciate all your likes and comments. Take care, and like I always say, have fun with it. See you real soon.